Sunday edition of the Belly Dance Quickies, and also week five of your sparkly wardrobe. So if you have not been following along with this, this is a collaboration between Sparkly Belly and the Belly Dance Quickies, and we have for the past four weeks, and this is week five, been going through costume inventories and costume upgrades and all kinds of things to take the costumes that you already have and use them to better advantage and to increase the quality level and versatility of them. So we've had lots of things already in the series. You can check the box down there for some of the prior links. And today, in week five, we're going to talk about and look at some different skirt styles and things that do and don't work for certain skirt styles movement-wise. So we're going to start out with our most covered skirt here. And this one, of course, is a 25-yard skirt. This is a tiered one. So this is something you would oftentimes see in tribal style. Um, and if it didn't have tiers on it, this very full skirt type of style would also be something that you would see in American cabaret style, too. Uh, so this one doesn't have any slits in it, but of course in a skirt with this much coverage, there's pretty much anything that you can do and you're not going to wind up revealing yourself too much. But there are also lots of things that you can do with the skirt that you can't do with other things. For example, um, reaching down to grab it and to use it. Now, of course, skirt dancing is a thing all on its own, and we're not going to get into that. But even if you are just doing AMCAB style, you can definitely just take it and pick it up sometimes to use it for a spin and then drop it and then go on with the rest of the things that you're doing since you have enough fabric to do that. So we're going to look at a couple of things across several styles of skirts. Um, and two different poses that are very common and also spinning and how the skirt reacts to a spin. So of course with this one, like I said, you know, you, you don't really have um, the danger of exposing yourself in this kind of a skirt. So just about anything you'd want to do, you probably could. Um, also, in this one, you have the advantage of being able to move the skirt and use it as a little bit of a prop for a moment. And so if you think about some of the poses that we oftentimes hit, you think of a pose like an arabesque pose. Here, when you notice, when you take a pose like this or another common pose that we often use, which is this cat stance pose with the leg like this, so you can't see that over here. And no matter how you keep your arms with this, you can see that when you have a skirt like this, your arm position is much more of a design factor in the look of your body, whether it's for a photography or for just a pose, than what your legs are doing because everything is hidden. So you need to make sure that the upper body and the arms are all in a beautiful line if you want to create a static image. Now let's look at how the skirt spins. So of course, like I said, you could grab it and hold it while you're spinning, but even if you didn't, as you spin, you can see this one flares out beautifully. It doesn't go up too high. Now, of course, every skirt is going to react a little bit differently, and some of them may go up a little higher than others, in which case you'd want to know that. And you'd want to either have hair and pants underneath or make sure that you know whatever you're wearing underneath is going to be something that is um, family friendly. Full and closed skirts are also a very good choice when you are going to be on a raised stage and you have people perhaps close to you and kind of at a high angle. Um, oftentimes this happens at festivals because you know there's really not much chance that they're going to get a peek under your skirt. So our next skirt style that we're going to look at is a full skirt that has an opening. Now this one, instead of having a single slit, this one has, you can see a panel right here with two openings on the side. Some of them just have just one slit, and it could be over the right or the left leg. Personally, I like mine over the left leg because you know, when I, I dance a lot of improvisation, and I tend to like to pose on this side as opposed to on this side, it just feels natural to me. So where you have your skirt slit is uh, usually nice to have it where the leg side that you favor for things like that. This particular skirt is a little bit sheer for wearing by itself. If the fabric was heavier and perhaps had a little bit more yardage in it, this could be something you could wear without hair and pants, but absolutely making sure that you have maybe some boy shorts or something underneath here, if you were okay with a very leggy look. And this was a place where it was appropriate, perhaps for, you know, a night party that kind of felt a little bit more grown up, not really a family family festival outside or something like that. So you always have to be really, really careful to pick your costuming for what's appropriate. Now, when you, if you dance in nightclubs with uh, like, a, like a live band, an Arabic show, sometimes they really do want a very leggy look for something like that, and that 
that's the case, when you're happy with, you're happy to do that, then this kind of a skirt works well. Again, you would make one to the fabric to be a little bit more opaque than this one happens to be. So with a style of a skirt like this, if you want to get that kind of a little peak of a leg, which is one of the reasons to wear a skirt like this. So as you're coming out of turns and some movement or something, so you can land into it and you can let that leg fall out. Now I don't have a belt on with this one, but you can imagine here that you had your belt on, this would cover a bit more down here. And also your skirts don't have to be slit all the way up to the top as this one is. You could either modify them by have, uh, stitching them together a bit further down. If you only wanted maybe to have it open just above the knee, that would be a little bit more conservative look. But still get a nice little peak of leg right there. And so you can see that for a pose like this, this gives you kind of a nice leg line. It's a little bit slinky. If you have an arabesque pose out here, if you get it just right, you might have your leg open. You can see a little bit of it. You know, where your skirt falls is always going to be a little bit up to chance. Um, so now let's look at how this one spins. So here, this one has a weighted hem because it has the beads on it. And you can see that it flares out. Okay. So the faster and longer that you spin, of course, the more it's going to go out. And again, you want to know it how the skirt reacts to what you plan to be doing in advance so you can make sure that you have either harem pants underneath or that you have some boy shorts underneath or something else that is covered and at a level you are comfortable with. Again, this style of skirt, if you are on a raised stage, there's some openness to it. So you want to be aware of what can be seen uh, you know, if people are viewing you from an angle up. On this style of skirt, um, if you want to do things that very particularly draw interest to the leg, you can. Now this one doesn't always fall open so nicely because this little panel here very conveniently sticks onto my pants. But perhaps if I uh, open this up out of the way here, we can see how a skirt with one single slit might react a little better. So here, if you take your leg in and out like this, that's very pretty and makes it take advantage of that. Or if you were going to do something like like a round de jambe lead onto something, that, or if you wanted to maybe do something where you lift the leg up high and then you would definitely get that slip to open like that. The next skirt style we're going to look at is a straight skirt with a slit. So this is something that you would very often see with Egyptian style costumes. Sometimes this is the style of skirt that you have on the costumes that are have the built-in belt or don't have a belt where the whole skirt is embellished and just have the bra that's separate. But if this happens to be an independent skirt, and I like these a lot because they're very versatile with bras and belts of lots of different styles. If you saw the episode for week three of your sparkly wardrobe, this is one of the skirts that we were mixing and matching with the bra and belt and using different. This particular skirt was custom made for me by Rukshana, so I asked for it to have a slit that was about at this height because I, I felt this gave me enough of a look for the leg, but also I wasn't going to be too worried about how this was going to react to moving. Um, now, you definitely will find some of them that are slit up higher, up here, and those can be modified sometimes or a little extra panel added, similar to the panel that was on the skirt that I last showed you, the chiffon skirt. So for this one, of course, you get that nice leggy look when you do posing or if you want to do some leg leading or something like that. Um, this one comes down far enough that if you were careful, you could go down and do floor work in it. Um, this fit right here gives you a little bit more stability and, and you know, not worried about how things are going to fall open. The skirt that I would last show you, the chiffon one with the slit, you have to be very careful how you get up and down on the floor with that and I probably would only want to do that with hair and pants on myself. So let's look at how this skirt spins. Now I'm going to tell you, I purposely put on some bright red undies. See, there they are. So if you are going to be able to see where my underwear is in this skirt, you'll know it because they're bright red. Okay, let's take a look. So here, I'm going to spin. So did you see them? Probably not because this comes all the way down. I do have another costume that has a higher up 
split on the leg, and that one I have to be very careful with. As a matter of fact, I made modifications on it to tack the little drape panel over the leg down just a bit because it was showing too much. So again, skirt like this, you'd be, you would want to, if the split was any higher, you'd want to be careful about using this on an elevated stage because even as you do spin, you're going to be able to see up into the skirt. And that's not something that, it's not part of the show. So if we're going to do something like an arabesque on a skirt like this, you see that it is going to open somewhat right there. And again, the height of your, of your slit here is going to determine how, uh, how much you're exposing with that. But this may be a position that you would want to be careful of if your slit on your skirt was higher. Um, another thing you have to consider with uh, anything that has a slit like this and it's narrow is anything that's going to take you into a wide stance. Like say if you're going to do wide bumps like this or if you're going to do a big circle that bends over or something like that. So you want to be careful about movements like that. Make sure you check them out before you take movements like that in a costume with this type of design onto a stage. If you're going to be dancing in a skirt like this um, and you have choreography perhaps that has a wide stance or some big bend overs or things like that, you probably want to run it on video just for yourself before you take it up onto the stage just so you can check and make sure that everything is going to be the way you want it to be seen. Okay, now for our last style of skirt. This is probably the most hazardous style of skirt. Um, this one is a double slit skirt, and it's full, and so you can see, oh, there's those red undies I was telling you about. Um, so you can see how important it is to have some boy shorts or something underneath. Now again, you will have a belt that's gonna hold down some of this on your costume. However, you've got all of this openness to manage. Now, um, if you look at really old, movies you can sometimes see you know they're wearing really narrow front panels on these and lots of leg and that's something that was very very popular you know in certain times and in certain parts of the world and you know Turkish dancers notoriously wear very open skirts as well so um, that is something that gets done personally it's not my style and I find that it and it's a bit of an opinion that um, too much leg and too much openness and when you do the general public show uh, tends to perpetrate some of the more negative stereotypes that we have to suffer through as belly dancers. So again, that's just a bit of an opinion. Um, so, but you can see here again that you have the whole leg thing that you can make sure that your leg gets seen. Now, this is a lot of leg to get seen, especially, like I said, you will have a belt that holds us down somewhat, but it doesn't do that much for you. Now, this particular skirt is a double layer skirt and it is not able to be separated. Now, if you have two skirts layered on top of each other like this, then you have more versatility, which we talked about in episode three, the mix and match one. But in this one, what I, there's a couple things that you can do to help uh, get a little bit more coverage here. And uh, I'm not even gonna spin in this one the way it is right here, because you know, there's enough creeps on YouTube, I don't need to invite them. So, uh, all right, so I'm gonna tie this. This is a little trick I did talk about in episode three, and like this. So if you do that, you can see that you can get some leg, but you're not gonna like open the entire thing. So that's one thing you can do. And you could tie both of them if you wanted to. But I like the way one opens and the other one doesn't. Here. And so now as I move, you can see that no matter what I do with my legs, this bottom one is going to stay fairly closed and I'm just going to get some a little bit of a peak over here. And if I spin with this, this is going to stay together and it really shows both the colors nicely as I do that. So you can see here that this stays together. Now another thing that you can do with a skirt like this, if you want to cover it up a little bit more, is to take this one here and to bring it up. So you can see I've taken about a, I don't know, about two thirds of the way down here, and I'm going to bring it up to the top of my belt and go like this. And so if I do that, this covers it a bit more. And let me show you on both sides here. Never tie these too tight. <laughs> up and depending on how far forward you tuck it 
or how, you know, more to the side is going to depend on how much this opens. So this like kind of starts to cover this part of the leg here, but you can still drop that leg out when you want to and bring it back when you don't. So you can be very selective about that. So this, you do have to be more careful. This is going to open more as you spin, as you can see. So you have to be more careful with that. This is not a good skirt style choice for an elevated stage. Um, so clearly because it's going to open a lot and it's going to come up, this is definitely something you can and I would recommend in a lot of cases to wear harem pants underneath of. That would be a very vintage look to do that. Um, also, you can do kind of as I have and wear boy shorts that are in a coordinating color underneath of these as well. So um, this is something if you if we're going to go down the floor with this, definitely you want some hair and pants on or you're going to have to be very careful about how you manage your skirts. You have to come down and maybe hold on to them as you're coming down and arrange them delicately while you are down there and then coming back up. That's not where floor work isn't something we're going to be covering in today's video. So as you can see, this uh, style of skirt is very versatile, and you can get a bunch of different looks out of it, but you have to be uh, careful about what you do in it. You can get that nice show of the leg for just a moment there, and let it come back inside the skirt. So this style of skirt can be very pretty in an arabesque position like that. You can get a little bit of leg open like that. It's also very pretty in a position like this. So as you can see, um, your skirt style is going to have a lot of different implications for what you can and can't do and where you can and can't wear it, of course. And so when you're thinking about and you're writing choreography, a lot of times when I'm working with a, a student doing a solo and helping them write their choreography, I ask them pretty early on about what kind of costume you're thinking of. Because sometimes you know, they have they already have a costume in mind for this that maybe they have chosen uh, based on the style of music or just because it's the one they have or their new one they're having made for them or something. And we always have to take that into consideration because, you know, like I said, if someone it decides that they want to do big leans or if they decide that they want to do lots of spins and things like that, you want to make sure that your costume is going to be complementary to that. And of course, if they say they have a really big skirt, and they're like, oh, you know, as we're doing things, you're, hmm, maybe we want to pick the skirt up for that movement right there and then just drop it when we're done with it. So you want to not just have your costume be safe for viewing with the things that you want to do, but you also want to make the most of it, and you want to use it to really complement your dancing. So I hope that you have enjoyed this edition of the Belly Dance Quickies, and also the Your Sparkly Wardrobe for week number five. We have three more weeks coming up uh, with a lot more topics in them. If you are interested in catching those weeks when they come up, you can check the box down there, and make sure that you are subscribed both to the Belly Dance Quickies email, not just here on YouTube, and also to Sparkly Billy's email because that is where the, those episodes will get delivered.
and that's um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. 